A long time ago, in ages past, a sprightly young Todd Howard revealed the title for the Elder Scrolls game that would follow the Elder Scrolls V. Can you guess what that title was? No, not Elder Scrolls 360 or Elder Scrolls Series X, it's the Elder Scrolls 6. And at the time, all of the great Elder Scrolls YouTubers emerged from their sunless gremlin caves to share their insights. Was it Hammerfell? Was it High Rock? Akavir, perchance? It even got to the point where we were breaking out our sextants like Victorian era explorers and making predictions based on the position of the sun in the trailer. The irony of YouTubers rising from their dank, cobwebbed basements to comment on the sun is not lost on me. In the four intervening years, much has changed. Elder Scrolls YouTubers have moved on from excited speculation to resigned speculation, from hopeful to hopeless. Let me tell you now, if you come to hear some miraculous, exclusive revelation that The Elder Scrolls VI is coming sooner than you think, then you've come to the wrong place. The game is a long way off, and as a fan of the Kingkiller Chronicles and A Song of Ice and Fire, I am far too weary to provide optimistic speculation. What I can do, however, is share insights into how I think Bethesda could create something special when they finally get around to starting production. I think it's likely that if The Elder Scrolls VI focuses on one province, then that province will be Hammerfell. I'm more of the opinion that it will include parts of both Hammerfell and High Rock, coalescing in the Iliac Bay region. This is because I think the Adamantine Tower and the Dureni Elves will be at the centre of the game's narrative. But there is still a chance it will be in High Rock, and the focus will be on the Bretons. And today, I'd like to engage with that hypothetical and share some thoughts about how I think Bethesda could nail a return to this province. As far as I can tell, the Bretons are beloved in the Elder Scrolls community, but in my opinion, they are currently one of, if not the most, vanilla, uninspired races on Tamriel. They are depicted as your run-of-the-mill medieval knights and nobles. They are your typical fantasy lords and ladies. This depiction has been reinforced by The Elder Scrolls Online. And not to be too negative, but when I saw the reveal for the High Isle expansion, it looked a lot like just about every other fantasy franchise out there. Now, that's not the end of the world. Even with the Bretons being Mundus' most mundane race, High Rock has huge potential. There is an old adage in High Rock, find a new hill, become a king, and this concept could be endlessly entertaining. The Elder Scrolls VI will of course have its main questline, in which you are the only one capable of saving the realm from total annihilation, and then some iteration of each of the side quest factions. But an Elder Scrolls game that capitalises on High Rock's political intrigue and power struggles would provide so much replayability. Imagine having the option to align with various monarchs and petty lords, using your connections to carve out a corner of the province where you can establish your own kingdom, adding strategy game elements like controlling vassals and recruiting ambitious knights until your dominion is completely unique and interacts with the rest of the region in countless ways. I could go on and on about the potential of an Elder Scrolls game in High Rock, and I just might in a later video, but I want to focus on the Bretons for now. The reason I'm writing this video is because I think a return to the homeland of the Bretons could be so much better if the province and the natives received an overhaul. I think a breath of new life and lore could turn the bland Bretons into a far more memorable, inspired race, with their own unique aesthetics, cultures, customs, folklore, and so much more. Pick just about any race in the Elder Scrolls, and you'll find that the lore is far more fantastical than the actual depiction of the race in-game. Take the High Elves, their capital city of Alanor is described as made from glass or insect wings. Straight and glimmering, a hypnotic swirl of ramparts and impossibly high towers, designed to catch the light of the sun and break it to its component colours, which lie draped across the stones until you're thankful for nightfall. The Elder Scrolls Online gives us our first real look at Somerset, and a lot of the mystical, mesmeric descriptions are dismissed, and replaced by fairly typical fantasy portrayals of an elven landscape. The Isle of Arteum comes much closer to capturing the magic of those early accounts. The same could be said of the Nords. Calling their folklore strange would be an understatement. The songs of King Wolfarth tell of an encounter with Old Knocker, or Orki, who summoned the ghost of Alduin the Time Eater. With Alduin unleashed, every Nord was eaten down to six years old. 
Vivek's sermons tell of Nord warriors like Huaga, the Mouth of Mud, who appeared as a great bearded king. He had the powers of marshalling and breathing the earth. On the battlefields, this demon would often be seen on the sidelines, eating the soil voraciously. When his men fell, Hoaga would fill their bodies back with it, whereupon they would rise again and fight. And then there's Kamua, the running hunger. He had the power of heart roaring and of sky sickening. Kamua could give clouds stomach aches and turn the rain of Veloth into bile. There are so many more examples I could give, including details about their totemic animal gods. But the Elder Scrolls V portrayed a much more imperialized Skyrim, missing a great deal of what made the Nords feel alien and almost inhuman. These are by no means major complaints, as I understand the need to keep your fantasy worlds grounded. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss the unapologetic eccentricities of Morrowind. The thing is, these depictions of Somerset and Skyrim, despite being toned down, still retained a lot of character. Somerset has magnificent architecture that jut towards the sky, a metaphor for the Altmeri desire to return to the heavens above. And Skyrim had those unmistakable Nordic ruins, which if you were willing to delve deep enough, housed carvings of the ancient animal gods that the Nords brought with them from Atmora. My one concern about High Rock and the Bretons is that depictions of them have never really embraced the more interesting aspects of their lore. There's no doubt that cool lore exists, but you need to distill it from the abundance of less cool lore. The Pocket Guide describes Bretons as not an imaginative people. Their villages are pleasant collections of half-timbered structures of one or two stories, with the rustic inn, a shop or two, and perhaps a lordly manor completing the picture. The people too, despite their cherished particularism, are remarkably similar in name, accent and dress throughout the province. Sometimes I get the feeling that lore like this is a lazy way to design High Rock and the Bretons. There is some variety between the kingdoms of High Rock, but that's nothing compared to the variety between cities in Skyrim and Oblivion. Both of these games were toned down already. In the former, the presence of the old gods was lacking, and in the latter, the cultural differences between the Colovians in the west and the Nibbanese in the east were not given too much attention. Yet still, variety did exist. What I'm here to argue is that, by embracing the more exciting Breton lore, an Elder Scrolls game that returns to High Rock could be far, far more unique than what we all expect. From first glance, Bretons barely stand out when placed side by side with Imperials. But why? This frustrates me so much. This early illustration of a Breton shows a rather androgynous looking male with sharp features and long sinewy fingers. One glimpse of this artwork and you can clearly see the cross-pollination of elven and human genetics. Breton or Baratu in the Elnafex language means half because they are half-breeds. I know there is a lot of real-world history behind the term Breton, which we'll talk about in a second, but we know that Bretons are descendants of the Dureni High Elves after they took Nedic concubines. This origin story for the Bretons is fascinating, but unless you go out of your way to read the lore texts, you'd never know it. The first thing I'd overhaul is the physical appearance of the race, make them taller than Imperials. Like the Imperials, the Bretons were once Nedic humans, but crossbreeding with the Dureni should show in their physiology. Give them prominent cheekbones and sharp chins, give them longer limbs and elegant slender hands. And on the topic of the name Breton, why not embrace some of the aspects of real-world Breton culture that make them stand out? Of course, High Rock as we tend to see it portrayed is much like medieval Brittany in northwest France. That's a start, but it misses a lot of what makes the Bretons unique. Now I'm no historian, so I won't make any huge assertions, I'll keep it simple, but the region of Brittany takes its name from the Britons who migrated across the Channel during the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Britain. This wasn't a swift process. The transformation of parts of Britain into England as we now know it spanned multiple centuries, starting in the 5th century. Why is this important? Well, the Britons, who were the natives of the British Isles, sported a remarkably different culture to the Anglo-Saxons. You can see it in the modern day, the difference between the languages and dialects of the Welsh, Scottish, Irish and Cornish peoples, and nothing like the Germanic languages and dialects that would make up English. The Britons warred with the Anglo-Saxons, and the lands that the invaders claimed became the kingdoms of England. But Wales and Cornwall were never conquered. This is a massive oversimplification, but you get the idea. 
So, Breton culture originates from the Celtic Britons, and I would love to see this culture embraced in their law. Forget adhering strictly to the imperialised divines. Give them their own folklore, like the Celtic folklore that makes up such an important part of Welsh and Cornish identity. I want to see fairies in the forests, luring knights off the beaten path. I want to see druids building wicker men as offerings to the gods. I want to see tales of King Arthur, of ladies with arms clad in the purest shimmering samite, holding aloft swords from the bosom of the water. I'm not saying that strange women lying in ponds distributing swords should be the basis for the Elder Scrolls VI, nor that some farcical aquatic ceremony would suddenly make the Bretons a top-tier Elder Scrolls race. But we already have witches' covens, we have brief appearances from Ifri-worshipping druids, we have some lesser-known old gods, like Druaga, the goddess of flowers, and the witchmen of High Rock are about as barbaric as the old Britons were when it came to sacrifice and divination. And I know the pocket guide claims that Breton dress is all the same, but some of Michael Kirkbride's concept art shows off really inspired armour designs, as well as the kinds of clothes worn by nobles in court. I mean, come on, we're talking about a race that loves court politics. As if they wouldn't be wearing garish gowns and outlandish outfits to impress their peers and show up their rivals. The potential is there. Honestly, my dream scenario would be for Breton culture and mythology, and High Rock as a province, to be intertwined with old Celtic British folklore, with the Arthurian legend, with childhood fairy tales. I think Bethesda could take inspiration from Toussaint from the Witcher series in achieving this. We see the gloriously vivid Duchy of Toussaint in the Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, and come face to face with fairy stories brought to life, often with uncannily nightmarish results. I would love to see Bethesda return to some of the really out there ideas that made us fall in love with Tamriel and the world of the Elder Scrolls. The Elder Scrolls VI in High Rock would be incredible, but I want it to be wonderful as well, in every sense of the word. I'd love to see High Rock and the Bretons as more than just generic medieval knights and lords, because that's a disservice to their ability to world build unique and memorable races and locations. What do you think? Would you like to see the Bretons overhauled? What would your ideal Elder Scrolls VI High Rock entail? Thanks so much for watching. I'm Drew Mora, and I'll see you in the next one.